Hello friends, if you're new here, my name is Malki Asad, a plastic surgeon resident in the US. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can get a fellowship and work as an attending or a doctor in the US without doing residency in the US. I get questions from graduates around the world saying, I'm a dermatologist in my country, can I practice dermatology in the US? Or I'm a plastic surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, and the list goes on. So in this video, I'll go over the details of what you need to do and the different pathways you can take to be able to practice medicine in the US without necessarily having to repeat residency in the United States. Before we start, it's important to clarify a very critical definition when it relates to practicing medicine in the US. Many people confuse the idea of being board certified in a particular specialty with the idea of getting the license to practice medicine. And these are totally different things because you can be licensed to practice medicine in a special state without necessarily having the board certification. So someone who is a surgeon can practice surgery in the United States without being board certified in general surgery. And many people think that is not the case. They think that you need to be board certified in order to be able to practice the specialty, but the state license is different than the board certification. Most states require you to have few years of clinical training in an ACGME accredited program or sometimes non-ACGME accredited program to be able to get the license. So if a state requires you to have two years of clinical training, for example, in surgery, you don't need to complete the five years of general surgery training to be able to practice surgery in a particular state. And this might be shocking to some people because general surgery in the US is five years. And to be able to be board certified, you need to finish a general surgery training and take the board and then pass the board and you would be board certified general surgeon. But the state license and the ability to do surgeries in a state legally without any issues, you don't have to be board certified and you don't need to finish the five years of general surgery training. Sometimes two or three years might be enough. So that is the big confusion between the idea of state licensure and the board certification. So to be able to practice medicine in the United States, you need to get the license from the state. And in order to get the license from the states, most states require to have two, sometimes three years of clinical training. Each state has its own rules, its own regulations. You might find some states uh, agreeing you to do one year of clinical training. Some states might require three, but the majority are either two or three years of clinical training. So now I'll be talking about the different ways to get these years of clinical training. And the most common one is doing a fellowship. A quick background about fellowships before we jump into the requirements to get into a fellowship and how can you be a competitive candidate for a fellowship in the US. Generally in the US after you graduate from medical school, you go into residency and then you go into fellowship. But since foreign graduates might have completed residency in their home country, they are eligible to come to the US and do fellowships without repeating residency. So they're jumping the residency step in the United States, they already completed in their home country and they jump it and they go directly to fellowship. And the reason why they do that is to get extra experience, definitely experience in a particular field, but also to get these years of clinical training I was talking about. Because if you do a fellowship for one year and then you follow it with another fellowship for another year, you get these two years of clinical training. So the fellowship and the number of years of the fellowship would count towards the years of clinical training. So the years of clinical training that the state requires you to have in order to get the state license, they don't have to be particularly in residency. You can get these years of clinical training in a fellowship and you would get a very specialized area of your field that would give you advantage when applying for jobs. By the way, if you need one-on-one -on -one session with someone who's expert in how to get fellowships in the US without residency, how to find jobs in the US after a fellowship, go ahead and schedule a consultation on our website and we'll provide you with all the details you need to know to pursue your career in the United States. And now let's talk about the requirements when applying to fellowship in the US without doing residency here in the US. And this is a little bit different from applying to residency directly. And you can check my video about all the steps you need to follow in order to match into residency in the US. But in this video, I'm going to focus on fellowship. Although there are similarities between the different fellowship programs when applying to fellowship without doing residencies, some fellowship programs have different criteria. But in this video, I'm going to focus on the main requirements that most programs have. But remember that in fellowships, there are a lot of exceptions and you might find some applicants who match without the requirements I'm talking about. But the requirements I'll mention in this video are the general rule. So the general rule to be able to match into fellowships in the US without doing residency inside the US are first, you have to do residency in your home country. 
So you have to have completed a full residency training in your country in the specialty that you're applying to a fellowship in. So for example, if you're applying to a spine fellowship here in the US, you should have completed the residency that leads to spine fellowship in the US. So in the US to be able to pursue a spine fellowship, you should have completed either an orthopedic surgery residency or a neurosurgery residency. So you should have completed either of these residencies in your home country before you apply to fellowship. So number one is completing residency in your home country in the big specialty that the fellowship falls under. Number two is BEC FMG certified. And in order to be ECFMG certified, you need to complete step one, step two CK. Previously, you needed to complete step two CS, but now this is not an exam anymore. And you need to complete the OET exam. And one of the pathways to be eligible to get the ECFMG certificate. So again, step one, step two CK, OET, and one of the pathways. And some fellowship programs require you also to complete the step three exam. And that might be the biggest hurdle to foreign graduates who are applying to fellowships here in the US because you've done the step one materials, biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, microbiology years ago and you might not remember anything and you need to review everything from zero. Step two CK, you might have specialized in OBGYN or neurosurgery and now you have to do an exam that is mainly internal medicine. The same applies to step three. So this could be the biggest limitation of foreign graduates applying to fellowships inside the US are the step one, step two, and step three exams. But I've seen many graduates and residents and even doctors in their home countries who are in their 40s and 50s and they succeeded in the step exams. So don't let this be a limitation in you applying. I've seen so many uh, people who succeeded in that and if someone did it, you're also able to do it. But as I said, there are exceptions. You might find some fellowship programs who might not require step three or not require ECFMG certification. But as I said, these are the exceptions and the general rule is that you need ECFMG certificate, you need your residency training and you might need step three. If you need more information on how to prepare for step one, step two CK, step three, make sure to check out the multiple YouTube videos I have on my channel and the different blogs we have on the different resources, how to prepare, how to ace these exams. And if you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions to give you an overall plan on how to study for step one, step two CK, step three, or subject specific tutoring because you have weakness in a particular subject, go ahead and schedule our USMLE tutoring sessions to give you the guidance you need to ace these exams. Now let's talk about how can you match into a fellowship in the US and what can make you a competitive applicant. One point to keep in mind is that most foreign graduates who do not do residency in the US, they usually apply for fellowships that are not as competitive as other fellowships. So some fellowships are very difficult to get in even for those who graduated from residency inside the US. So these might not be the best option for someone who did not do residency in the US. So you might apply to a fellowship within your specialty that is not that competitive. And later on, as we'll talk about later, you can apply to better fellowships or more competitive fellowships that you're interested in after you build your CV inside the United States. So now what can make you a competitive applicant for a fellowship spot if you didn't do residency inside the US? One factor that fellowship directors look at is where you did your residency training. So if you did it in a big hospital that is known internationally, that has good reputation, that they know people from, that might give you an advantage over other applicants who train in hospitals that are not well recognized. Another factor is letters of recommendations from mentors who worked with you throughout your residency training. So if they wrote amazing things about you, you're one of the best residents they worked with, your surgical skills, uh, clinical knowledge, they were phenomenal and they mentioned that in the letter of recommendation, that can give you also an advantage. Some might ask, what about the USMLE step one, step two CK, step three scores? Are these important when applying to fellowship? And the answer is they are not as important as when applying to residency. So if you're not familiar with the residency application process, when applying to residency, the step one score previously, now it's pass fail, and now the step two CK are very important in screening applicants when applying for residency. But these scores are not as important when applying to fellowship in the US. So study hard for these exams, definitely pass them from the first time, try to get a high score, but if you didn't get a high score, it doesn't mean that you won't get a fellowship in the US. Research is another important factor when applying to fellowship in the US, especially for big academic centers. And you might get this research experience from your home country, you might have worked with mentors from your home country and got publications, or you might have taken some time off after your residency or during your residency to do research in the US. And the second option, which is doing research in the US, goes into our next point, which is the connections. So connections, in my opinion, might be the most important factor in getting you a fellowship spot in the US without doing residency. 
So if you do some research experience inside the US with a mentor who is influential in the field, who can write you a good letter of recommendation, or they can take you in their own fellowship position, that might be the ideal case. So that's why building your connections inside the US is the most important thing whenever you're applying to fellowship without doing residency. And some might ask, how can I build these connections? As I said, research is an important one. So if you're doing research in the US after your residency or during your residency or remote research, that could be a good point whenever you're applying to fellowships. Another way to build connections is conferences. So if you go to international conferences, conference inside the US, meet people, shake hands, that makes people remember you, who you are when you're applying to fellowship. Another way of building these connections is through U.S. clinical experience. So some programs might have relationships with programs inside the U.S. or you might find sometimes on different society websites they have these collaborations or these funds or scholarships they give to international residents who can come to the U.S. spend some time in U.S. institutions. So doing these type of U.S. clinical experience or you just contacting someone uh, by email asking them to observe them or do a formal elective inside the US, that might give you a huge advantage when applying to residency. So the combination of connections that you build through research, through your US clinical experience, through meeting people in conferences, the research experience itself, publications, the reputation of your home residency training, all could be factors that can give you advantage when applying to fellowship. Now let's talk about what happens after you do your fellowship. If you remember, we mentioned that in order to practice in the US, you need two or three years of clinical training inside the US. This varies by state, but most states require two to three years. So if your fellowship was two years and the state requires you to have two years of clinical training, you have this checkbox and now you can go and find jobs. But if you did one year of clinical training and the state requires two, or you did two years of clinical training and the state requires three, you need more years of clinical training. And there are multiple ways to get these extra years of clinical training. You might do another fellowship. And as I said before, if you started with a less competitive fellowship and now you're looking for a more competitive fellowship, you can apply now because now you have some experience in the US, you have mentors in the US who can vouch for you when applying to the more competitive fellowships. And this extra fellowship can give you the more years of clinical training that you need to secure the state licensure. Another way of getting these extra years of clinical training to meet the state license requirement is to do residency. And you might be shocked, why would someone do residency after they do a fellowship? Because now they have a better chance of getting into residency. For example, if you're applying to orthopedic surgery residency directly, it's very, very competitive. But if you do a fellowship as a spine surgeon and now you apply to residency, people know you, people trust you, you've got some training inside the US and they might be more willing to take you in a residency spot. And doing residency in the US gives you multiple advantages. One of them is getting the board certification. We'll talk about some pathways that you might get board certified without having to repeat residency, but most residency programs, most specialties in the US require you to have residency training to be able to get the board certification. So some people would repeat residency in order to get that board certification and have no restrictions when they're looking for jobs. You might not need to repeat the full residency training. Some might repeat two or three years. Some do only one, which is the preliminary year or the transitional year, which would count as an additional year of clinical training. So for example, if you started as a prelim surgery and then you didn't match into pedagogical general surgery and you decided to pursue a fellowship, the year of prelim counts towards the years of clinical training that you need to meet the state license. So to meet the number of years required by the state to practice medicine in the US, you can do another fellowship. You can repeat residency fully or repeat one or two or three years. Now, after you met the number of years of clinical training inside the US that are required to get the state license, you start looking for jobs. And this, what I'm gonna say now, is mainly for those who did not do residency in the US. Because if you did a fellowship and then you repeated residency, you were in a totally different situation because now you can be board certified. So I'm gonna focus on those who did not do residency, did fellowship, met the requirement for the number of clinical training years, and now they're looking for jobs. And some applicants get so lucky and they match in phenomenal institutions, they find jobs in institutions as if they did residency in the US. But most applicants are not that lucky because there are limitations when hiring someone who did not do residency in the US. You'll find some institutions who do not hire someone who is not board certified. So one of the criteria for hiring is being board certified. And although legally you're allowed to work in the US, the institution doesn't want to hire you because they want somebody who is board certified. But you'll find some institutions. So it's difficult. 
it's hard to find jaws but it's not impossible so that's why some people do two or three or four or five years of uh, fellowships until they find a job so if, if you don't find a job you do another year of fellowship you don't find a job you search for more fellowship until you you find a job in the u.s so that's why this route is not easy some people have done that and done that very successfully but it's not easy and it requires a lot of hard work and especially people who are advanced in their home countries they do big surgeries they have big positions they might find it difficult to repeat exams from the beginning and try to find a job with, when they have amazing jobs in their home country so that's why you have to think very carefully about this route if you want to pursue fellowship and repeat residency or find jobs without doing residency because it's not easy and there are limitations on the number of jobs available when looking at someone who did not do fellowship who did not do residency but did fellowship inside the US another very interesting route that so many applicants are not familiar with is that you might even get board certified in certain specialties even without doing residency so some specialties like radiology if you do four years of clinical training in the US as a resident or as a fellow so if you did four fellowships you might be eligible for board certification and you might be board certified without doing residency so if you did for example four years of fellowship and apply for the board now you're board certified radiologist and you can practice without limitations so some specialties and i've seen that uh, happening more often i'm not going to mention all the specialties because this changes and i'm i heard that general surgery implemented that recently orthopedic surgery has implemented some type of that so there are details about how many years and in which institutions but i know that there is a route to be a board certified orthopedic surgeon board certified general surgeon board certified radiologist without doing residency in the u.s and if you want to discuss that one-on-one -on -one with someone who did that route in the specialty that you're applying to go ahead and schedule a consultation on our website and we would be happy to help you and guide you through this difficult process and the final information that might also be shocking and it also shocked me when i heard it is that you might be able to work in the u.s without doing residency without doing fellowship and this is mainly through a route that the institutions would sponsor so if an institution sponsors you you might be able to work in that specific institution without doing residency without doing fellowship but this route is not as common and you require the institution to sponsor you to be able to do that and that brings us to the end of this video i hope it brought to you some information that you were not familiar with or you did not know that it existed because we all think that you need to do residency in the u.s to be able to practice as a physician in the u.s but there are multiple routes that can get you to be working in the u.s without doing residency as i said if you need one-on-one -on -one guidance on how to get a fellowship in the u.s without doing residency how to work in the u.s without doing residency go ahead and schedule a consultation on our website i will provide you with all the help you need starting from the advising going to personal statement editing cv editing and interview preparation if you find any value in this video go ahead and hit the like button subscribe to the channel and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever i post future videos on my youtube channel thank you everyone so much for watching and good luck on your journey